Hi, I'm Sally. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some extension libraries. It is open source library that we can improve, we can contribute. Uh, you may, as you may already be aware of, um, all of the videos in this channel are in, tu in Turkish language. However, this one is not. And there is a reason for that. Uh, it is because there's an open source project that I built a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to reach too many people. It is because uh, this project is kind of useful project for us. It is going to help us a lot when we are working on uh, specifically in web APIs. It is C Sharp based project and almost all the videos are based on C Sharp in my channel. But as I said, but as I said my audience is limited with Turkish people because the videos are in Turkish. But I'm making this video in English specifically for this reason, actually. This is a text body, te tech body extensions. It has in total, for now almost, of course, it has four different web API extension methods that makes our life easier than it is used to be. And to, in today's video, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna be talking about exception handling mechanism. How we can implement any exception handling mechanism in our web API. I'm just gonna show it to you guys, and it will be a single line of code, as well as we can. We will be able to configure it as, it as well. And it has, as I just said, it is a public project. It is called GitHub Tech by the TR and Tech by the Extensions. You will find the link in the description below easily. And when you get in this page, it is well documented on the readme file as well. But as you already clicked one of those, for example, global exception handling, you will find another readme file. So the documentation is already over here too. You will find an instruction for installation or about the usages. And there are a couple of contributors that wants to improve that code, that specific code and add something else. As I just mentioned, there are four different project in this extension, which um, API versioning comes the first and then the exception handling. And the third one is the Fulliant validation based vali validations. You will find the user just if you go into the details. And the fourth one is open API support, which means Swagger or Swagger UI for now, but open API is a kind of standardization term. So the Swagger and Swagger UI is one of the clients that uses the open API standards, but most of these in, um, improvements or extensions in this library based on Swagger for now. But if you know what you do, and if you make the contribution, we can just discuss it over here. If you have any issue on, about that, or if you find any bug, or if you want to improve any piece of code over here, so you can create your issues, or after that, you can create your pull request as we already have some over here. This project is for a couple of weeks only, and I am planning to make it known by too many people so we can contribute and make it big. Let me start with a project by um, using this exception handling. I'm going to try it to make it from scratch because I wanted to show how easy to implement it in your project. There is no code behind, there is no magic behind it. So I'm just gonna create the project from scratch and we'll show you. Uh, for this purpose, I'm just gonna create an, any web API project, it doesn't matter actually. Uh, but yeah, it must be web API, not web app. Yes, web API, uh, exception, handling, web API. I'm just gonna name it like that. So net seven, net six, it doesn't matter, but the project itself based on net six. And it also, all of those extensions have different NuGet packages. For example, if we can click that one, we will we would be directed to nuget.org where you can find all the other extension methods as well. So if you search, for example, tech body extensions, you will find four of those are already over here. And let's get into the exception details. You will find the repository, source repository as well. So it will redirect you over here. Okay, let me get into global exception handling and this is the project name that I want to install my project. This is a basic weather forecast, weather forecast controller over here. Let me start it first to see how it works. 
and then I'm going to create an action which throws an exception and will show you the result. So at the end of the day, when you try, it will just return a basic data, which we expect. And I'm going to come here and say, okay, I don't need you. I'm going to throw an exception. I'm doing it in purpose right now, but it doesn't need to be in purpose and I'm not handling it an exception in purpose. And this is not the name I'm going to use. It will throw an action result only. And we don't need that too. So basic, I'm going to delete those two. Okay, now let's try. When I call this, when I hit this endpoint, it will throw an exception and Swagger will return you as some JSON body as a string, actually, it is not a JSON. The whole exception handling is over here. Exception details, the stack trace for exception over here, we can see it. As we are working on development side, development environment, this might be okay. But if you are working on production side, you don't want to, you don't want your client to see this, all this exception, right? So we are going to mask it somehow. Okay, this is what we see when any exception occurred, when any unhandled exception occurred. And let me implement the library and I'm going to go and search for that one, just copy and paste it and download it. I'm just going to come here. It says in the documentation as well, as it is a middleware, you have to use it with app. So it is not a service. We are not configuring any service. We are going to use it. So let me just copy that one and come over here. It doesn't matter where I put as it is middleware. I'm not going to configure it. So I'm just going to use the simple. So the default implementation, So default implementation, just observe. I just added one piece of code or over here, one line of code over here. And when I hit the same endpoint, okay, throw it now. What I see is another JSON that time, it is a JSON, not a string, well formatted JSON data. As we are seeing, okay, internal server error, or not, there's a typo over here, maybe the next issue will be changing those. And it says, okay, there's a status code over here, which is 500, which match with this status code, HTTP status code of this request. So now it is well documented. It is well formatted, I say. But also, I wanted to customize it somehow. For example, details and status code, um, I don't like it, maybe. Next thing, I will be configured it to configure the response data, actually. Not only I'm going to be able to configure it in every sense, but I will also be able to provide different responses for different types of exception. For example, this is an exception in purpose. So I'm just going to come here. Okay, not the default one. Okay, comment it out and yes, options we have. Now less time to configure it. So option has, for example, um, use custom exception, use logger, use blah, blah, use blah, blah. So for example, when I said use logger, I don't need to provide any parameter, but I can. So I can provide it, it's a logger, a specific logger. Or when I just use called that one, all the exceptions will also be logged as well. So um, let me see if we have output logger over here. Let me try to implement builder services, add logging. And over here, let me try to use I add console. So so I can see the details on console as well. So let me start this one again. And come over here. Do we have terminal console? Let me try to duck it over here and delete those. 
let me hit the endpoint again to see what we see. Blah, 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 blah. Now I am, yeah, I am putting everything in the logger as well. So basically I'm using, when I implement that one, it uses the logger that is already injected to the system and syncs the logs about the exception and wherever it is. So in this case, it syncs the logs into the console. But this is not the only configuration that I can use. I'm gonna make it more complex with by um, using exception handler. For example, when I say use custom handler, it tells, okay, provide me a function which gets parameter as uh, in the parameters HTTP context, an exception, an iLogger, and returns back a task. So basically an async function I need to run, I need to provide over here, which has three parameters. And just after that, for example, um, let, let me just call it H. Sorry, not H, actually, we are going to have three parameters. So context, and then exceptions itself, and the logger, it provides me those three. And it will, of course, be async. And then from now on, I am who is who is coding, who is customizing this function is responsible for the result. So for example, let me just create a dynamic object over here and dynamic object and put, I don't know, something in it. Let me just say, okay, a message maybe. And it says exception here. Okay. And maybe after that, and new in the new line, I will just get the exception match message itself. And also I'm gonna say um, another property, maybe status code again, but this is custom HTTP status code, or maybe the path. Uh, yeah, path would be okay. So how can I get the path? So I have context over here. Context has requests, request has a path. So I can put the path over here. So to show, when you're calling the endpoint with that path, this exception just occurred over here. And from now on, by using uh, this HTTP context, by awaiting context response, write as JSON async and pass the dynamic object in it. So now basically what I do is just customize the handler, provide a handler to this exception handling mechanism. And when any exception is occurred, this function will run. So I'm just gonna get everything I need from the context and exception. And maybe I will just log it, for example, logger and log warning, maybe. Uh, log warning that exception occurred, but no worry. I'll handle that. Maybe this is the message that I log in warning message. The severity level is morning and I'm using that one as well. So now I'm just going to try to hit that endpoint again by doing nothing different. So basically hitting that endpoint. Okay. Okay. Now what I see is that, okay, I have message, message property, I create a dynamic object because it says, okay, exception here, exception in purpose. This is the message I got. And it has a path. Let me just check what the path is. When I just hover the mouse into the path over here, it says this is path string, which also has value as well, which will return that, oh, not over here, which will return that path again and has value true, but that that's okay we could just get path dot value this is not the point what i mean is just okay i customize it right now so when any exception occurred i'm just gonna pass this return back um and this will be my object that i built but what if i want to customize it in some other exceptions as well for example we have get method over here throws an exception but let me just create any other virtual method and get out maybe. And I'm just gonna try to unauthorized 
access exception. No, sir, you don't have the permission. When I get that one, let me just give it a route. Let me call it auth. Hmm, good drive. And when I hit that one, there will be unauthorized ex access exception. So in this case, if I don't customize it, I will see the same result because it throws an exception. It goes my custom exception handling and it returns the same one. Okay. But as I just said, when any authorization access exception occurred, I want to customize it. So what I need to do is just come over here, say options, add custom handler by providing the type of exception, for example, on handle exception, what was it? Let me just check it again. Unauthorized exception, access exception occurred. I'm going to provide you handler. I'm just gonna copy the same. And you are going to call that one when this one occurred. So let me just make a couple of changes over here. So. Yes, I will have a message. Okay, that's acceptable. But yeah, I'm not gonna show the path. Instead, I'm just gonna say out exception or out message. This is an out message. And maybe this one goes error log. Maybe you'll see it. And have section of yeah, yes, handle that. This could be okay. But what I try to do is over here that I'm customizing my handler by providing any exception type. So in this system right now, from now on, if any unauthorized access ex exception occurs, this action will be run, will be executed. Beside that, so if it is not unauthorized access ex exception, all the others goes over here. So to prove that, let me hit this both endpoint and to see the result. So the first one throws a normal exception type where I can see my message path, blah, 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 blah. And when I hit this auth exception, I will be seeing something different right now. It says, okay, message, and this is auth message. So basically now I customize my response body. So as the standard, maybe we can use this, but there is something that I can configure the most, which is also important. Let me come over here and say, okay, use handler, use logger, but blah, 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 blah. I have any other project, uh, any other options over here, which call, which is called use exception details, which I can set it either true or false as it is Boolean. What it does, actually, let me just demonstrate it with something else. Let's imagine we are on the development side and I'm not using the message over here, but I'm using to string and not providing any other exception. So basically, I am putting everything related to this exception into the JSON response. Let me just show it to you. How does it look? I'm hitting that one. Yes, F5 and C, yeah. The message says, okay, there's an exception over here. This is the message, but this is where it is called in weather forecast controller, blah, blah. Maybe you, you would have some um, service layer. Maybe you would have some, I don't know, CQRS pattern you, you were using. You were just passing this parameter to somewhere else. It doesn't matter actually. You are basically showing everything to the client. It is not what we like actually. Maybe on the development side, that's okay. But if this piece of code is working on your production side, you don't want to show everything related to your system, to your client. So if we just set this one, and basically I'm not gonna use that one, I'm not customizing it right now. So when this is true, I'm just gonna show it to you again, what happens. I am using the default implementation and I'm calling that one. And yes, please. And yeah, as I see the details, everything's in the detail property. 
everything. Let me just set it to false and see the result. And still I'm using the default implementation. And when I call it, it says, okay, internal server error occurred and this is 500. Now I basically customize this message to show the message, to show the exception detail or not, or just the simple, any static text. It doesn't matter what it is like. So what it gives me to the ability to change the response details, but just by doing this, I will show you something else. When I hit this again, I will see only a simple message over here, whereas I can see all the details, all the exception details in my logger. So this, what, what this does actually, when this is true, it puts the, all the details into the response JSON body and also the logger as well. But when this is false, it puts a static message to JSON over here, but puts everything into your logger. So if you go log your logger, you will see every details. So for example, if you are keeping your logs into the file, when you get into the file, you will see all the exception details, but your client will only see that simple message when you set it false. So to do that, actually, we can just say, okay, I have an app, it has an environment and it has an is production property is production function actually. So in this case, I'm returning it to false. So not, I'm saying if it is not production, use exception details, it doesn't matter. But as long as it is production, don't show anything to user. So basically I'm using this environment property in the system, ASP.NET Core underscore environment. It is an environment variable. If it is production, it is not gonna show anything to your client, but you will be able to see everything in your logs. But this is this only makes sense when you are using the default implementation, because if you are passing the custom exception types, it is not gonna catch it. That is because you are customizing it and you are taking all the responsibilities from the system into your action over here. But let me try to use like that. So I just say, okay, add custom handler over here, use that one. So if authorization access exception handler handled, I'm just gonna use that one. Otherwise I'm not using anything. It will be the default one implemented and I'm using that one. So let me see how it works. I'm just gonna hit this weather forecast again. It is just gonna throw a normal exception and I see, okay, detail, which means this is a default implementation and detail shows me everything because it is development environment right now. It is not production. But when I hit this out one, What I see is the message that I customized over here exactly. So I have the responsibility to put the whole message, maybe the to sit, exception to sitting, or just the message coming from exception. And I just customize it by adding something else. If I check it, I what I will see is the custom message. But when I hit that one, then again, my other rules, so default implementation rule will be over here, which I set it not to use all the details in production. As long as it's a production, it's just gonna hide everything, but I was just using it on the development side. So if you, for example, to prove that, um, if you're just gonna come over here, let me find the environment variable. Um, may it be the launch settings? Do we, yes, when I HTTPS, yes. I'm just gonna set it to production. This is what I changed. And I'm hitting that again. Now you will see what happened, maybe swagger. I'm gonna run it again and hope, think what just happened. Uh, 
Um, let me check it. Here we are. This is our swagger. And I just said, okay, this is the production environment. So when I hit this forecast, it will throw a normal exception. Um, there's something wrong with that. The production is not working. Let me just debug it. So to see if the is production is just throwing the correct position by saying that is production is true. So the show of details is false. Um, I should not be able to oh, swagger again. Let me just switch that one to back to development and then false. Let's imagine we are on production level and I'm using the default implementation and okay. Yeah, I just see this, this message. So when it is in production level, I just show it. I just see it that one. My client sees only that one. But when I get the my logging, I will see every details about my exception. So basically, this is an exception handling where you can customize your handler by customizing by providing a specific exception types. And also you will be responsible by um, you will be responsible for responding back your object is it's any object, it doesn't matter actually what it is. And also you will find different usages over here. So for example, you're providing a custom logger and you will see the details in the documentation and providing a dynamic response model when anything happened or basically you can customize it by, oh, I don't know, maybe when it is validation exception throws, okay, this is a valid ex validation exception. And maybe this is an arguments and null exception use another uh, logging or another response or any other function action over here or for all the others you can just use that and the next video in english probably will be about api versioning or maybe the validation because the validation can be used in web apis as well as for azure functions um, api versioning will only be working for web api and the open api which is already uh, is a swagger will be able to use and uh, will be able to will will be able to use only web APIs as long as I remember. Let me just check when I click the NuGet, it says okay, tech body extension and open API. So it is not a specific for web APIs. Let me just show the trick to you. So it says Tech by the extension validation. Validation means for ASP.NET Core or Azure Functions. If it says ASP.NET Core, for example, for the API version, you can see it is only for web APIs. So the open API is also for Azure Functions and web APIs as well. So my next videos will be about one of those. I'm not sure which one, probably the API versioning, but it is that simple again. Add a piece of code over here and customize it however you like and boom you have done everything you like. So if you like this video, please click the like button. And I don't know as the upcoming videos are English, but the most of the videos are in Turkish, but you may just subscribe to my channel. And if you want to be notified by YouTube, when I publish the new video about that one, so please make sure that you click the notification bell button. So I'll see you in the next video.